Let's humble down, raise our kundalini and put ourselves in bound down.
Shri Ganesha Mantra. Om Dvameva Sakshat Shri Ganesha Sakshat Shri Adi Shakti Mataji Shri Nirmala Devi Namo Namaha
this is the second part of the interview. Uh, the, la the first half was uh, last week. This, so this is the second half. And it's good to remember for who came into Sahaj as, um, as adults. Uh, what probably what kind of questions we asked and what uh, the questions that other people ask around us if we're not yogis. You can feel the different centers that are within you and if you know how to correct them, you're all right. I mean, we have definitely cured cancer, we have definitely cured epilepsy, we have definitely cured many, many diseases which is being now established by Delhi University and the three doctors who have got MD out of it. But how do you do this then? This is simple as this, that, see, when you go to extremes, you go out either to the left, to the right. If you go to the left, you get emotional problems, you go to the right, you get physical or mental problems. Simple as that. When this Kundalini rises, she pierces through all these centers, enriches them, it's a vital force, so enriches them and also put them together so that all the time the energy is flowing to them because it is also connected to the means. But it obviously demands a faith and a belief, doesn't it? No, not at all. Faith and belief is outside, is mental. It's a mental projection that has done much more harm than good. But if somebody comes along and says, I, I am ill and is desperate because they know that they are very mortally ill. Yeah. And um, says, okay, let's try it. That doesn't necessarily mean to say that they will actually get this. Feeling. They have nothing to do about it. The person who is going to help them can only put the hand on their head or could be on their back and can cure them. It's so simple because fundamentally we are very simple. If you know the fundamental points about ourselves, that there are seven centers which are to be controlled. Of course, uh, in, the, uh, in the medical terminology, you can say that there are plexuses, but they are on the physical side, also on the mental side, also on the emotional side, these centers are. If you know how to correct these centers, you are all right. But back we come to this thing, how does a person get to the stage where they can give this sort of help to others? That's what I'm saying, that once, supposing I raise your kundalini, and you get realized, so you can do it. Only thing you have to know a little bit decoding, that's all. But there must be a realization within a person's mind. Not before, it is after. Before is only mental or emotional. But how does this happen to a person? Because it is already built in. It is something like, now you have this machinery, if you put to the means, it works, because it is built in. Surely, though, there is a point where a person realizes that they have got a gift, or they, no, otherwise no. they just go on through life doing what they, they were doing. You see, there is no question of anybody having any gift or anything. It is question of you being a human being, first of all. Second point is that having the desire to know the truth. That's all. I'm still, I must say, slightly confused as to the point. I and many, many other people, a lot of our listeners, ah. we want going about their business and their homes on the streets and yeah, so on. Yeah. And what you've told me is that within them they have the Kundalini, right? Of course. But, of course, they are probably unaware of that. They are unaware. And they don't know how to use it. Of course. So at what point and how do they actually come to use it? It has to be awakened, first of all. As I said, it is to be connected to the means. That's, say, my job, or could be the job of John or somebody who has got realization and who knows about Kundalini. We call them Sajogis. Nowadays, see, I cannot travel all over the world. I do, but we are now working in 30 nations. So these people are doing it. They don't take any money for it. There are no charge. What can you charge? What then is the mission, then? Mission is to emancipate human beings, to transform them. If you have to bring people to some sensible situation, we have to see that they receive the truth, which is absolute. We live in a relative world. That's why all these problems are there. Don't you find, Mataji, from time to time, that the problems of the world are so enormous? There's a disaster here, a disaster there, a few people fighting each other over there and killing each other, people taking hostages and so on. 
it's the point when you say, yeah. you know, is, is this too much? Too much, I know. But you see, but because everybody has gone amok, if you can just somehow or other get them to the absolute point, and if they become the divine computer, everything will fall in places. Everything. We have done it. I mean, you will be surprised now we are Jews. They worship Christ and they love Muslims. The other day we had one Iraqi and one Irani hugging themselves, kissing themselves. So wonderful to see these people. There's no more these artificial boundaries, no hatred, nothing. But we're talking, in fact, at the moment of the exception rather than the rule. How? No, 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 no. There are many. They are in thousands. They are in thousands. It's not exceptional. They are not exceptional people. They are very ordinary. Actually, exceptional people are lost in their ego, mostly, in their success. So they never come. They'll never come to Sajo. They'll go to false guru whom they can purchase, they can give money. Like, to me, only those people who have real desire within themselves come. But somebody has a desire to earn money or to, say, have a, some sort of a power, I mean, political maybe, they go to somebody like that. Here it is the question of spiritual power. In a way, from what you're saying, you've not set up a bureaucratic, formalized faith. Not at all. Bureaucrats are the worst of all for this, because my husband is a bureaucrat. You are not him to be a bureaucrat. <laughs> see, they are very difficult people. They have to manage their seats, you see, all the time. And also the politicians have the same problem. And they are always very insecure about it. But as far as other people are concerned, who are neither here in the competition of power and in the competition of money, those such people are the ones who come to me first. They are the easiest to handle. But then we can also handle difficult people. It's not, it's not so difficult now because we have done it. So now I find it's not going to be that difficult. You must get quite a lot of skeptics come along to you and say... Oh, lots of people, they say all kinds of things. Doesn't matter. You see, they are in ignorance what to do. But our religion is to know yourself and enjoy. We call it the innate pure religion. Is that a religion then of me personally? Of course. Which you know. It's not somebody has to tell you anything. You know everything yourself, within yourself. And if you need any guidance, then I can give you or he can give you. But as you grow, you yourself start experiencing it. You feel you are in the kingdom of God, the way you are looked after. On the other hand, does one slide away from the, uh, from the established path from time to time? No, the establishment is, uh, you know, as it is. So... <laughs> You become so dynamic, you become so dynamic that you stand out. We have people who have gone up so much in the field of art, in the field of music, in the field of education, after coming to surgery. Everybody. Serial procrastination is something that affects 80% of the population. Even high-performing... You'll be amazed that in Sahaja Yoga, when people come, even in England, we have no one who is unemployed. We're talking a lot, I would have thought equally, about self-knowledge. Yes. So you know the self-knowledge because you know about your centers. You know where you lie with yourself. You face yourself. You know that you have this problem, physical, or this problem, which is emotional, or this problem, which is mental. Last of all, a spiritual problem also you may have. All these problems you can see yourself and then only you can correct it. And you become so peaceful. For example, now, if you see in the normal state, we think all the time we're thinking. Supposing now there's a red light I see, I start thinking about it. Something must come into my head about it. It will not be a silence there. With this happening, what happens? A thought rises and falls, another thought rises and falls. And we are jumping on the cusps, in the future or in the past. Now when this happening takes place, what happens? That in between there's a little space that is the present. 
You just stop there. That's the peace. You are so peaceful. Despite all this is happening around you, you are extremely peaceful. You witness everything. And because you are out of the problem, you can see it create clearly and you can solve it also. It's like jumping out of the water in, the, uh, in a boat and seeing it. But if you know how to swim, you can save others also. It all sounds so easy. It is the easiest has to be. All vital things are easy. Supposing for our breathing, if we had to go to library, what would have happened? It is too, so vital for us. We are all in that power. And that power has to see that whatever it has created has to come to the stage. And the human beings are the epitome of that creation. We are at the epitome. And we have to just jump a little or say the little breakthrough. And we are there. But one has to open the mind to see that there's a chance. Is that then any hope that we're going to get at some point to the perfect world? I have all the hopes, all the hopes. When I visit other countries, I'm amazed. And now Russia has called us. What do you say to that? <laughs> Russian government. There, as they would say, and I don't mean that as a cliché, is the question and the hope. Her Holiness Sri Mataji Nirmala Devi,
I'm now putting some music on and saying goodbye to you all. Thank you so much for joining in. If you like to continue meditating in silence, then just turn the volume off. And uh, otherwise just enjoy the music and have a wonderful day. Oh, Jay Ganesha, 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 Jay Gan